Hey guys, it's Penguin here, and welcome back to another gold making video. In today's video, we are going to be covering our second to last dragon fight profession, and this is jewel crafting. I know a ton of people have been looking out for this profession, so I'm glad I can finally bring it to you, and hopefully this will answer a ton of your questions. Now, as always, if you guys are looking for other professions, I have likely already covered them, with leatherworking being the final one coming in a few days. So I do recommend checking out those previous videos if you want to know more about a specific one. But everybody, thank you so much for watching these videos. I truly do appreciate it. And let's get into this video. And so as always, let's first introduce jewel crafting to you and give some pros and cons. And now, I mean, jewel crafting is pretty simple, so I don't have a ton, but I was able to come up with some points. The first one is, is that there is a lot of intertwining with other professions. Now, I'm not sure if that actually makes sense, but what I mean is that a lot of jewel crafting items either are used by other professions or jewel crafting needs other professions. Now, I'm going to get more into this whenever we start looking at recipes, but for example, jewel crafting can craft, you know, draconic vials, which is used in every single potion recipe. You know, you're going to be crafting items that are used for engineering and also blacksmiths. So if you're somebody who is planning on doing a lot of those other professions, jewel crafting is going to be a must. Now, another pro that we have is that there are also cooldowns in this profession, which of course means that if you have alt armies, you can definitely have multiple jewel crafters. Now, the downside compared to the other professions out there with cooldowns is that it takes a little bit more effort. We will talk about that more once we once again dive into recipes, but there are cooldowns available. It might just take a little extra effort. And so with that being said, really the only con that I have is that there is a lot of options. So once again, it could get very overwhelming if you're trying to decide what path you want to take, if you're somebody who is bad with decisions, but ultimately if you have lots to craft, that also means you have a ton of markets to be in, which is ultimately a good thing. So take this with a grain of salt, but overall jewel crafting looks really awesome. And so, part two, we have all of the requirements. Now, thankfully, jewel crafting is pretty simple with its reputation. All you will have to grind out is the Dragon Scale Expedition, as well as the Tuskar Reputation. Those are two of the four main factions in Dragonflight. Now, thankfully, if you guys have seen my other videos, you may notice that yes, there is a ton of recipes here, but they don't require that high of renown. The highest one is two items at renown level 18, but a lot of them are at 9 and 10. Meaning, you know, compared to something like tailoring, where you're unlocking things at renown 23, this is a little bit easier. Now, the downside of that is yes, this is easier, but all of these items, I dare say, are super, super important. You will notice the idols that you see on that list are actually your trinkets. So if you're somebody who is planning on crafting those, you have to do that. Also, basically every other recipe is a gem. So I would dare say that all of these are super important, so you really should grind this reputation. Some other professions you can get away with not doing that, but I highly recommend. Also, of course, there is a single item that comes from the Artisan's Consortium, which you will likely be grinding anyways for knowledge points, but that is something to keep in mind. And so next up, we have our profession equipment. Keep in mind, jewel crafting is, of course, a primary profession, so you can have two accessories in one tool. Up first, we have the Alexstrasite Loops, which is an accessory that comes from jewel crafters, so you have the opportunity to craft this for yourself. Then from leatherworking, you have the resplendent cover. And then lastly, I believe it's pronounced Lapidaris Kazgarite Clamps, which comes from engineering. Of course, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter because you can just order these through the crafting order system, or if you have an alt, you can craft it for yourself. So it doesn't really matter where they come from, but these are the three pieces you're going to want to ultimately get your hands on. And so with that out of the way, before we dive into the in-game recipes, let's talk about what jewel crafting is going to be using. Now, of course, jewel crafting uses prospecting, which means jewel crafters will be utilizing all of the different type of ores. I've covered that in other profession videos, but we have servite ore, draconium, as well as casgarite ore. So you will be prospecting those to get gems. 
And this time around, we actually have 11 different gyms. Up first, we have our five different green gyms, which is just our more common ones, technically uncommon, if you want to go by the fact that they're green. But you have the Queen's Ruby, you have the Mystic Sapphire, you have Vibrant Emerald, Sundered Onyx, as well as Eternity Amber. Now, matching all five of those, we have the rare versions, which you will probably recognize these names. But, you know, corresponding to each color, we have Alexstrasite, we have Malagite, we have Yesemerald, we have Natharite, and then we have Nasdorite. So, you of course will recognize this naming scheme, but those are our five overall kind of basic gems. Now, I did say that there was 11, and that is because there is this diamond, which is kind of your high-end gem, will likely be pretty hard to get, and this will be used for your best possible gems. Now, besides that, of course, we have those basic gems, we have our ore, but then we have some other just random items, which we'll talk about more in just one second, but I will just quickly flash them on screen. We have a few random side items that you can get from prospecting, as well as a new gem dust, which is from a new crushing ability. But let's go in game and actually talk about what those are. And all right, we are officially in game. And let me quickly show you what I was talking about. Now, as always, you guys are probably familiar with prospecting where you take a different type of ore. And then of course you take five ore and then they will destroy them into gems. If we look at our inventory, these are all the different gems. Now, not only will you receive these gems during prospecting, but you will also get these two different side reagents. We have fractured glass, which is just utilized in some other recipes. And then we also have crumbled stone. And the interesting thing is that you can actually re-prospect crumbled stone and get a few more items. So these are kind of this side effect. Of course, you get gems, but you also get these two items. Now, up next, we have a new ability, which is called Crushing. And what this does is very similar to Prospecting, but you are actually using gems. So, for example, let's say you have just some leftover quality one gems that, you know, you just kind of want to get rid of or whatever. You can crush them like this, and then you will gain a random amount depending on quality and all of that. You will get some gem dust. Now you guys will notice these in these further recipes, but these are used in a sense of recycling gems. So if you have some gems left over that you don't really plan on using, you can turn them into gem dust and actually make them useful again. Up next, let's talk about reagents. So I kind of put some of these on screen, but there is a ton of them, which is why we're gonna showcase them right here. Up first, we have this basic Harmony Reagent, and if you guys have seen my Alchemist video, you will notice this item right here, which actually I do have alchemy on this character, and right here it is this item. So I did mention how all of these professions are kind of intertwined with jewel crafting, at least a lot of them are, and this is an example right there. So if you are somebody who is going to be trying to create this elemental harmony, you also probably want an alchemist. Then very similar to other professions, we have our finishing reagents, we have some, you know, other finishing crafting reagents, and then right here, this is another important system. If you guys have just watched my previous video on engineering, you may notice this item's name. And if you look at the tooltip, you'll notice something even more. These are the cages that must be used for the soul inhaler. So if you watch that video, you will recognize that soul inhaler, which is how you get those different soul items. And so somebody who is using that also needs this reagent to actually capture that essence. So once again, this pairs very well with others and will likely be in high demand. Up next, we have the Draconic Vials. So these are the ones that, you know, every single alchemist potion recipe needs. And normally you can buy the quality one version from the vendor. However, most alchemists will likely want to get quality two or quality three. And that is where jewel crafting is very important. Up next, we just have some more traditional, you know, intermediate crafting reagents. We have the Frameless Lens. We have the Simmering Clasp, which is used for a lot of basic recipes. 
And right here we have glossy stone, which is actually used by blacksmiths. So once again, there's that third profession. We have engineers, blacksmiths, and alchemists all relying on this sort of character. Moving forward, we have our most simplest and just basic gems available. All of these use the, you know, green versions of the gems. These will likely become very, very outdated, but they all have a different type of stat. Right here, you'll notice this is Critical Strike and Haste. The first one up here is just Stamina. We have Haste and Versatility. We have Mastery and Critical Strike, as well as Versatility and Mastery. So these will likely be used maybe at the start, but will quickly become outdated. And so moving forward, we have our main sort of gems that a lot of people are going to be using throughout this expansion. And we have four different types. We have air gems, we have earth, fire, and frost, relating to the types of awakened that they are using. For example, right here, you know, the air gems are using mostly air as well as some fire. But right here, we have Earth using mostly Awakened Earth. Once again, Fire using mostly Awakened Fire. And then Frost using mostly Awakened Frost. Of course, they may have some other bonus reagents that they need. Now, what these four categories actually correspond to is the type of stat that they are giving. So right here, you will notice Critical Strike and Haste. But if we look at the other type of air gem, we have versatility and haste. So air gems, you are always guaranteed that end stat, which is haste, but it's going to be paired with something else. Moving forward, we have stamina and haste, we have mastery and haste, and lastly, we just have haste. So if you have a recipe with mostly awakened air, that means you are creating haste gems. Also, you will notice that there are five gems in each category, and they correspond to the each of the rare gems. Earth, we have mastery gems right here. So all of these is mastery sort of combinations. Then moving forward, we have critical strike. And then lastly, frost, we have versatility. So you can choose to focus on a certain type, depending on what type of stat you want to focus. Up next, we have our special BOP gems. And yes, I said BOP, but it's okay because you can order it through the crafting order system. And so these are where that super rare or that high end diamond comes to play. Also, it requires BOP reagents, which is that primal chaos. They are currently called primalist gems. And so I will just kind of let you guys look at the tooltip and see what type of stats they are increasing. How this works is that it's just a bonus of primary stat and also a singular substat. Now, if you guys are looking at those numbers and think it's pretty low, keep in mind this is only quality one. So this is not how the, you know, highest end diamond actually looks like. Up next, we have an item that shouldn't be overlooked. You know, they stuck it in a miscellaneous category by itself, but this is actually a pretty important item and this will allow you to add a socket to an end game necklace. And as you guys can read, a necklace can have up to three sockets, which means this is super, super valuable. Now, because this is a quality one, it's only adding one socket, but as you go up in quality, it can add two or three. And so yeah, a lot of people are gonna wanna get their hands on these, especially if they have a very nice necklace, but they don't have enough gym slots. Up next, we have the four different trinkets. And remember that all of these trinkets are tied to reputation, but these are gonna be your end game trinkets that a lot of people may want to craft. Once again, these all have a certain equipped bonus and you can only have one of them equipped at a time and they are BOP, so you'll be using that crafting order system. One thing I do wanna point out is that airy soul right here. Remember, you know, you will be crafting empty soul cages which are utilized with that engineering item, and that is how you actually obtain this item. But we have our different versions. Once again, you guys can just take a look, pause the video if needed, and we'll move on to the next. And so we talked about trinkets, but also we have necklaces as well as rings. Now these are kind of all shoved in a single category, um, but once again, we'll take a look. And so up first, we have a necklace. I'm just gonna let you guys be able to pause if necessary. You guys can read all of these stats, but we have a few necklaces, we have a few rings, and a lot of these are uniquely equipped. 
Then we have our more basic version right here. These are our two PvP versions. You can tell by, look at that, it's using Rousing Ire, which is that Blood Awakened item. So if you couldn't tell by the name or the tooltip, you know by the reagents that this is PvP. And then of course you have your other two very basic rings and necklaces. Up next, we have some pretty interesting items, which are carvings as well as statues, which are all items that do some sort of unique bonus or action. Up first, we have this pinata right here, which, you know, you can place onto the battlefield. And so this is actually a item for battlegrounds, which is really cool, or just open world PvP. But you will see that depending on who attacks it or whatever, um, you will gain a random battleground buff. So these sort of items have this kind of unique use, which are really, really cool. This one allows you to increase your size and agility, which is pretty unique. Right here, you can gain a plus 15 fishing skill to anyone who's near it for 1.5 minutes. Keep in mind, this is just quality one. Then right here, we just have another unique one. You guys can read them. Then lastly, one right here, which will likely be utilized a ton, is a ground healing spell. So you place this down, and for a short period of time, it will heal you if you're in that area. So, once again, pretty unique. Moving forward, we have battle pets, which is always lovely to see. And honestly, I like to think of these just like the jewel crafting panthers back in Mop. Now, of course, this is a battle pet, this is not a mount, but, you know, you had the different sort of jeweled panthers, and this is the same thing, but this time it's a wellplane. So they are pretty expensive, I will say that. They are also BOP, so if you want to actually get the item, you're going to have to order it, or of course, you can buy it through the auction house if it's caged, but you will notice the very expensive reagents. So, you know, it requires a diamond, it requires a special cluster, some elemental harmonies, so these definitely are not cheap. But there is one for every single color, which is pretty cool. We are almost at the end, we have three more categories left, but right here we have novelties, which is basically just cosmetics and toys. Right here we have one singular toy, we got another one, we have just some random copy appearance items, so just for fun. And then we have the cosmetic rhinestone, in quotations, sunglasses. And then lastly, we have another sort of spectacle cosmetic. So if you guys are somebody who likes those sort of ones, if you can't get yourself the true rhinestones, you can utilize these to make up for it. Up next, we have our final two categories, and the first one is just profession equipment. So, you know, the standard by now, we have, of course, our own jewel crafting equipment, we have inscription, we have more inscription, and lastly, enchanting. And then of course, we have the lesser versions of all those four. And so lastly, I mentioned this during the pros and cons, but we have cooldowns. Now these are called glasswares, um, and basically what you do, if we just look at the bottom one right here, you can use some fractured glass and some gem dust, so kind of that recycled gem, and then you can convert kind of four of your basic gems into a handful of your rarer versions. Now you will notice that I have done this recently, and that is why there is that cooldown remaining. But basically what I did is I crafted this item, and it granted me, because this is Eternal Amber, I was granted Nazdorite. So it basically takes that uncommon version and turns it into rare. Now the amount and quality you get depends on your skill level as well as your specializations, so we'll talk about that in recommended builds, but overall this is just a way that you can recycle that lesser version of gems into the higher version. Now, as you guys probably would like to know, the cooldown without any sort of upgrades is 20 hours. Because the cooldown is 20 hours, of course, by default, I like to just call this a daily cooldown because it's close enough to 24 hours. But if you hear somebody talking about these jewel crafting daily cooldowns, technically the cooldown is only 20 hours. But we have five different versions for each different type of gem. And lastly, we have this big version, which takes everything and also grants you a ton of the other gems. So this is kind of an all-in-one transmute. And of course, they all get that daily cooldown. And so that is all that we have for recipes. So let's go over leveling. Now, jewel crafting is probably one of the best sort of trainer learned leveling professions. As you guys know, trainer learned recipes will only get you so far. 
and you can reach level 70, which of course is very, very high. Now, as you get closer and closer to 70, it may get slightly harder because recipes are gonna turn yellow or green, but even so, you can get to 70 pretty comfortably, and I will have that on screen. Now, because of the leveling path being so simple, you're only going to gain about 12 knowledge points. Now, even though the leveling path is only going to give you 12 points, you're going to unlock plenty of items that aren't, you know, actually being made for leveling, so you can go back and craft those to gain some extra. But if you follow the path on screen, you're only going to gain about 12. And so let's get into the recommended builds. Now for today's video, I have three different recommendations, but before we get into that, let's talk about some disclaimers. Up first, remember that even though this is called specializations, you can unlock everything. Right here, I have not touched anything at all, but I can go through here and I can unlock every single one because I have my skill maxed out. This also means I can put as many points as I want to into everything, but of course, it's going to take some time because I of course need to gather knowledge points. Now, with that being said, yes, you can learn everything. It's going to take some time, but once you put points in, that is permanent. So just for example, right here, if we put in five points here, of course you can undo, but once I hit apply changes, that five points is put there forever. So I cannot remove this. If I unlearn the profession, it sticks there. I can't do anything about it. So be very careful because if you do make a mistake, it's okay because you'll get more points and you can unlock everything, but you are limited on how many points you can get in a specific time frame. But all of those disclaimers are out of the way. And before we actually get into build one, I wanna talk about this first specialization tree. And if you guys can kind of tell by the name, this is just your overall generic jewel crafting tree. It just gives you overall bonuses to kind of everything. And because of that, I'm not really going to focus on this in terms of specific builds, but I did want to go over it. And so the first one right here, you're going to gain some speed, some additional skill. And then lastly, you're going to gain some overall speed and other bonuses. So right here, if you just have some extra points, you can improve your overall crafting ability. If you decide to focus on the right side, this is your big inspiration buff. So every single one is just giving you a ton of inspiration for every single item. Then on the other one, we have the same sort of thing, but resourcefulness. So it just once again follows that same sort of pattern. So if you're looking for some any, you know, big inspiration or resourcefulness boost, this is the tree for you. And so for build number one, we're going to be talking about transmutes as well as gems. Now you guys will notice this tree right here is broken down into four different subcategories. Now you will notice this is air, earth, fire, and frost. And these are the exact same gym categories that we had right here. And of course they correspond. And so to unlock those transmutes, you have to unlock every single subspec. You will notice that upon learning, you're going to be able to gain the ability to transmute those lesser items into the more rare version. So what you will need to do is just put in points. So right here, our first 10 points in, we'll be able to choose a specific one. Let's say we pick frost right here. We hit apply changes. You will notice we learn a recipe and boom, right here. This is that cooldown. So we can craft it because I have the items. Why not? We have that 20 hour cooldown and right here, open it up and look, we got some rare versions of the gym. And so you will have to do this with every single one if you want to do transmutes. And so this is where that huge downside about alt armies are, because in order to unlock everything, you're going to have to put in 40 points. And so once you do that, you will be able to learn every single one and get your hands on all of those cooldowns. Now, of course, I mean, if you have a lot of alts, you could only do one, right? That's only gonna cost you 10 points. So that is doable. But another downside is that you're also going to be crafting low quality gems. So it's just, once again, just another downside. But these are how you unlock your four different cooldowns. 
And so, of course, as you kind of finish this off, you're going to gain additional resourcefulness, additional stats like that, and lastly, you're going to gain the ability to craft gems 10 times faster. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't just want to focus on transmutes, but you also just want to craft different gems, that is where you're going to specialize in a specific tree. So, for example, if you want to specialize in air gems, which is your haste gems, then you would want to throw all of your points into this tree. You're going to gain additional stat and skill for that specific gem, but you're going to gain recipes. So right here, you're going to gain one version. A second version, you're going to be able to gain, you know, finishing reagents, and then you're also going to be able to gain that specific high-end gem. So depending on the stat you want to focus on, this one being haste, you will likely want to focus on a specific sub-spec. So, you know, if you find out that haste gems are in the most demand, you will likely want to throw all of your points into air to get that best-in-slot diamond BOP item, as well as the other air gems. And, of course, this just works with every single one, corresponding to their own type of gem, so we're not going to go in-depth to the rest of them. Now, going back, let's back up real quick. Let's say you want to still prioritize transmutes. So, you know, you're not going to specialize into air or fire or anything. You don't really care about the other gems. You're just focusing transmutes. And this is where you're going to want to step into the enterprising tree. After you put in a specific amount of points, being 10 if this is your first one, you're going to be able to spec into glassware. Which glassware, remember, is that whole you know, sub-category of all of those transmutes. What this will allow you to do is just increase the quality of those items and reduce their cooldown. Just unlocking it, you're going to unlock that ability to change your appearance, so just a fun item. You're going to gain some additional skill, but right here, your cooldown is reduced by 50%. Which is huge, as you know, the cooldown normally is 20 hours, so that is massive. If we continue on, you're going to be able to increase the yield of gems. Once again, very, very nice, because you can only do this every few hours. You're going to be able to craft kind of a cosmetic item, which is pretty cool. You're going to be able to unlock the final transmute, that is kind of the one that is all together. So it takes all gems, and you kind of get all gems back. And then lastly, you're going to get even more yield. So if you're somebody who wants to focus on these sort of items, you're going to want to fill this tree out completely. And so if you are somebody who is trying to count points, in order to unlock all of the transmutes at the highest level, this is going to cost you 40 points, and then this is going to cost you another 55. So that is almost, you know, 100 points, technically 95, that you would have to dedicate just to transmutes. Up next, let's say you don't really care about gems, you don't really care about transmutes, but you want to focus on armor, and that is where setting comes into play. Now, you do notice that you have two different sides of this tree, and it really just depends on what type of items you want to focus on. If you guys go to the left side of the tree, if we're going to have to put some points in, you can choose necklaces and rings. And so as always, this is just going to increase, you know, your skill and everything of crafting those items. We're going to have to put a few points in, there we go, and then we can learn our final one. Let's say for this case we want to focus on rings, and automatically you're going to pick up a very nice ring recipe. As you put more points in, you're going to gain additional bonuses, you can use embellishments, and lastly, you can also use finishing reagents. And the same thing sort of applies for necklaces, you're going to gain that very nice BOP necklace, as well as some additional stats and ability to use optional reagents. Now, maybe you're somebody who wants to focus more on trinkets instead, and if you go to the right side of the tree, you're going to be able to focus on those idols. Those idols are the trinkets that comes from reputation, and this is going to increase your ability to use, you know, optional reagents. You're going to be able to gain additional items, and lastly, you can also use finishing reagents. And, of course, this technically isn't really related to armor, but if you guys do go this route, you also have the ability to unlock stone, which is for those carving statues. So that statue that, you know, gives you a battleground buff or makes you big and gains agility, those sort of items can be improved with this tree as well. 
you'll learn a specific statue right here. And then lastly, you'll just be able to use finishing reagents. Kind of, you know, you can see the pattern here. So if you're somebody who wants to focus on these types of items, this is going to be the main tree that you want to put your points into. But overall, this is just the tree you're going to want to focus on if you're crafting that high-end armor. Now, maybe you want to focus on profession tools, right? Because a lot of people may want to spec into that, then you're going to want to go back to enterprising. Right here, if you guys follow to the middle one, this is going to increase your profession gear crafting. Right here, you're going to be able to unlock a finishing reagent, but you're going to gain skill and stat for profession gear, as well as reagents, which can be very helpful. So if you're somebody who is going to be prioritizing those sort of items, this will likely be a specific subspec that you might want to focus on. And so lastly, we've covered transmutes, we've covered gems, we've covered armor, statues, you know, profession gear. And so lastly, we have our most simplest build, which is prospecting. As you guys know, prospecting is the base of all jewel crafting, so some people may want to focus on exactly that. And luckily, you really only have one nice option, which is literally called prospecting. So they're making your life way easier. So if you do unlock enterprising and go this route, automatically you're going to be able to potentially discover prismatic ore when prospecting, which yet can be another item to prospect for more gems. So very similar to the crumbled stone that anybody can get from prospecting, it's that same sort of thing, but way more valuable. Then, of course, you're going to increase your speed, you're going to be able to get more glass when prospecting, you'll be able to increase your inspiration, gain more raw gems when prospecting, then lastly, you have the chance of those prismatic ores, which unlocks from here, can actually contain Kazgarite ore, which is so valuable, and of course, you gain additional speed. So if you're somebody who just wants to focus on prospecting, maybe you spend your first, you know, 25 points. Of course, you got to put points into here. So maybe you spend your first 35 points in just prospecting to just make your life a lot better. But yeah, guys, that is it for jewel crafting. I know that was a ton of information as always, but hopefully this gives you a little bit more knowledge and you guys get excited about jewel crafting. We have one more profession to go, and that will be out in the next two days, right before launch. So if you guys are waiting for leatherworking, it will be here very, very soon. But with all of that being said, you know, Dragonflight is upon us, which is super exciting, but also nerve-wracking. So I hope you guys enjoy expansion launch, I hope you guys are excited about it, and of course, let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. But everybody, thank you so much for watching, and have a good day.